everyone my name is Grace and welcome to get your plate online um, today is Sunday fun day and at 5 p.m. that means that we do arts and crafts and so for today we are going to be doing um, clothespin snowflakes so they will look like this we're different sizes so here's one and here's one um, and so as winter approaches we're just gonna get in the winter mood by making these and so these are really good. They help with our fine motor skills. They help us with the tiny movements that we do. So with our hands, so like pinching the clothespins um, and then being creative so we can paint these how we would like and decorate them with the things that we have around the house. So to get started, the materials that we'll need. Um, so you'll need clothespins. And uh, I recommend having, if you have three different sizes, that's awesome. But you can also just do it with one size. So this is the large size clothespin and then I have medium size clothespins and I have these tiny ones as well. Um, so I have three sizes but it's okay if you don't have three sizes. And to make one snowflake you need eight clothespins. And so after the clothespins you will need some string or ribbon so that we can hang them up afterwards. Um, you'll need some glue. I ran out of my normal, just like Elmer's glue, so I'm going to be using hot glue today. Um, but you can do this with normal glue. Um, if you are going to use a hot glue gun, make sure that you have a parent present and helping you with that because it is hot, so we need to be careful. Um, and then we need a paintbrush and some paint. Um, I recommend white paint. That's what I'll be using. But if you want to use different colors, you are more than welcome to because these are your snowflakes. So let's make sure that was everything. Oh, and the other fun thing. So we can also decorate with other things around the house. I'm going to be using glitter to make my snowflakes shiny. Um, so you can grab some glitter too as well. All right. So the first thing we want to do, we want to make sure our space, which I have a table down here. We want to make sure that it is ready and prepped for gluing and for painting. Um, so if you need to, lay down some protective paper. That could be newspaper, um, tin foil, um, a tarp, paper towels, anything like that, just to keep your table safe from getting messy. And then next, what we're going to do, we're going to take our clothespins and we're actually going to take them apart. So right now you see that they're together and they open and close just like this. We're actually going to take them apart. So the way that I do this is I turn it sideways like so and then you kind of pop the metal piece off and you kind of have to wiggle it there we go see and it just pops off so now you should have three pieces when you take your clothes one apart you should have two wooden pieces and the metal piece we don't need the metal piece so you can set that aside but we do need to keep track of the wooden pieces all right we're going to do that again so just so you can see it it's together and we're going to twist and you just kind of keep twisting and wiggle it until they separate. So two pieces, metal piece. All right, and we're gonna do this with, for one size, you're gonna use eight clothespins. So right now I've done two. I'm gonna keep going until I've done eight. So this is number three. Let's twist. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. There we go. All right, this is number four. All right, here's number five. You twist, oh, get apart. Number six. number seven and lastly number eight all right so those are all the ones I need of the large size and I'm just gonna we're gonna work one size at a time so we're gonna make the large snowflake first and then we'll move on and use our other clothespins after that so after we have separated all of our clothespins, they should be individual pieces like this. And so what we're going to do is we are going to um, 
connect these through the flat side. So as you can see, see how this side is bumpy and then this side right here is more flat. So we're going to connect both of these pieces by their flat sides. So they should be able to line up just like so, just like that. And so we're going to do that with each pair and we're going to use our glue to glue them together. So you're going to take your clothespin and with the flat side, like so, you're going to use your, um, remember liquid glue works just as well. I'm just using hot glue because I ran out of liquid glue. But on your flat side, you're just going to put your glue on top. It's kind of like we're making a sandwich. All right, got it. And then you, the other flat side of the other one, and you want to match them up just like so. And then you make a sandwich with the glue. So it's just like that. So see how this bump right here matches with a bump down there and they lay flat on each other. So we're going to do that with all of the pieces that we just un, all the clothespins that we just undid. And once you do one, you can set it aside and let it dry. So I'll show you again. So I have my two pieces, and so, see this side is the bumpy side, it has the grooves, and this side is the more flat side. So we're going to glue on the flat side, like so, and we're making a sandwich. And you don't need too much glue. And we're going to take the other one, and you want to make sure that the ends are the same. So, there you go, let's see. We have the skinnier end matching up the skinnier end, and then this more rounded end matched up with the rounded end. And you just squeeze it together, just like that. All right. Oops. So you're gonna keep doing that, and at the end of this, you should have eight um, pieces. Oops, on the flat side, remember. Just a reminder, if you are going to use hot glue, make sure that you have um, an adult with you to help you with it because you need to be careful. Um, so glue on the flat side and then make a sandwich by matching up the ends. So far, so... I've made four so far, as you can see, and we're going to keep going until I have eight all together. All right, I think I'm on my last one. All right. Let's squeeze it together. All right, let's see. So this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so I have all eight. And so we've glued it all together. And so now we're gonna start assembling our snowflake. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to make a plus sign with four of the pieces that we just made. And so what I mean by that is you're gonna take two pieces and you're gonna use your glue and you're gonna glue the ends of the fatter sides together so that it'll be end up like this. So you're going to take your glue and just put a little bit on the top of the like more rounded fatter end. And you're going to take that same end, so both, and you just want to make sure that they're the same way and hold them together. Just like that. So. 
hold it and let it tight uh, and dry. And so right now we should have a line made of two of our clothespin pieces. And the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to grab another one of our um, bundles. We're going to call these bundles. And you're going to glue it on to the top like so. So that we're kind of, well, yeah, we're going to glue it to the top, but it makes an upside down T. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to put my glue right here in the middle of the two that we had just glued together. So just a little dollop of glue. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put that third piece right on top so that it makes an upside down T. Yep, so it should be looking like this right now. And after that part is glued, which mine's still uh, wet, you can blow on it to make it dry a little faster. Alright, so next what we're going to do, we're going to, so this is how we had it, we're going to flip it upside down so that it does look like a T. We're going to put another dollop of glue right there in the middle. And we're going to take our fourth one and we're going to place it right there on that dollop, right in the middle. So that now we have a plus sign. All right, we're gonna let that dry. So to make your plus sign, you need four of those bundles, just like so. And so for this next part, what we're gonna be doing, it's a little trickier. We are going to be putting another bundle in between each of these spaces right here. So we're gonna use our last four and we're gonna go in between um, those spots. So in those 90 degree angles right there, that's where we're going. So we're going to put a dollop of glue there on the edges. Might need a little bit more glue for this one. You're going to take a bundle and you're going to press it on in there. And this one we have to hold a little bit longer. Just like that. So we're making more sides of our snowflake. I'll let you get a good look at mine. This is where we are so far. So we have five. It kind of, it looks like a star right now. And after the glue has dried, I'm going to blow on mine so it dries a little faster. So this is what we have so far. We're going to turn it again so that we have another space. This one right here. And that's where we're going to put another dollop of glue. So in that V-shaped area, we're going to put another dollop of glue. And then we're going to take one of our other bundles and we're going to just press it on in there, making sure that it's connecting with the glue. And you want to hold it there and make it nice and bonded. So that now we have six sides coming out. It's looking more like a snowflake. So hold it there, hold it right here so you can see as it dries. You can blow on it. Alright, so we're going to turn it again so that we have another V shape. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a bit of glue there. Then our seventh bundle is just going to go right in that V spot, like so. Sometimes you might see that it might need a little bit more glue, so you can be careful. And just to reinforce it, you can put a little bit more, which is what I'm going to do real quick. We're going to turn it one last time because we have one more last V right here. And we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. A dollop of glue. And put that last bundle in there. Just like so. There we go. 
All right, so now we have a full snowflake that we have made. I'm gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, what you can do, you can get your paint and paint brushes out and ready. I put my paint on a paper plate. Um, so if you have that, that works well. I'm gonna wait for it to dry all the way. And then we are going to paint our snowflake. So again, I'm using white paint, but you can use whatever colors, you know, blue, light blue, dark blue, um, any colors that remind you of winter or anything, um, or really any color that you would like to paint it. I'm going to go with white though, because it reminds me of snow. All right, so I have my dry snowflake and I have my paintbrush and my paint, and we're just going to paint all around it. We're going to paint all the sides. Just like that. And you're going to go all the way around and you want to make sure so you get the tops like I just did there. You want to make sure that you get the insides. Let me see if I can show you. There we go. The sides of it, just like that, and the tops. So all parts and then also the back. So all sides of the snowflake you want to paint. Need a little bit more paint. use your paintbrush and you can use different size paintbrushes I'm just using one but if it works better to have a smaller paintbrush for different parts of the snowflake then you can use different size paintbrushes um, but painting also helps with our fine motor skills development the way that we grasp a paintbrush helps with our our small movements that we can do so it can help when we're writing um, and doing things like that or picking up small objects like maybe like cards or marbles so you're just going to go all the way around Just like so. Alright, I'll show you where I'm at in just a minute. Oh, let's finish one side. Alright, so I've painted all one side. Now I'm going to go in and paint the sides of it, the insides. And paint goes a long way on clothespins, so you don't need too much of it. You just have to spread it out. Right. Oops. You want to be careful, too. Um, if you have an apron, it might be fun to put an apron on so you don't get paint on your clothes. Or if you have an old t-shirt or maybe like a painting shirt that would be good so you don't get paint all over yourself all right getting close just doing all my sides all right let's see here just a couple more So, it's also important when you do this, so mine I was able to do a little faster because I did use hot glue, but again, normal glue works just as well. You just have to make sure that your snowflake is dry before you start painting it because it might um, break apart as you're painting it. Alright, so now I've done the insides, see? So I've done this side and the insides, and now I'm going to do the back. So I'm going to paint this side now.
All right. All right, so I have finished painting all my sides, as you can see, the front, the back, and the little inside parts. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. And as that is drying, I am going to work on another sized um, snowflake. So you can continue painting yours if you need more time or if you're ready. We're going to do the same exact thing that we just did, just with different sizes. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to use my medium size ones. I'm going to use this size. And again, I just need eight. And I'm going to do, again, twist it and pull it. And then pull off the metal piece. So I have three pieces. And I'm setting the metal piece aside because I don't need that. So I'm going to do that eight times. Seven. And eight. All right. So now that I have my different pieces, like so, again, we're going to use our glue and we're going to glue the flat sides together. So you can see this is the bumpy side and this is the flat side and you can even feel with your fingers the side that feels more flat and so we're going to take our glue and on the flat side we're going to add some dollops of glue you don't need too much you're going to take another piece with its flat side and you're going to match them up like so and make a sandwich and you're going to do that with every piece Find the flat side, put glue, and then you're going to make a sandwich matching up the parts that are the same. And just like that. I'm going to keep going just like that every time. Number three, flat side, dollops of glue, matching up and making a sandwich. So when I say match up, see there is a thinner end here. It goes down and it gets tinier, and this side is fatter. So you want the fatter sides, the thicker sides to be together, and the thinner sides to be together. Was number six. Here goes number seven. Okay, and last one, number eight. So taking the flat side, putting glue on it. Up another end, matching them up and making a sandwich. Perfect. All right. So after we have all eight of those pieces, we are going to make our plus sign again. So remember this, our glued pieces together, our sandwich pieces together, those are our bundles. And so we're going to take one bundle and we're going to put glue on the tippy top of the thicker end, just like so. And you're going to get another bundle and you're going to place it right on top of it. Hold it there and let it dry. Okay. 
Alright, so it should be like that. It should have a line. Alright, and then you're going to and you have a horizontal line on the top, right in there in the center, you're gonna put some more glue. Just a bit. You're gonna take another bundle and stick it right in there to make an upside down T. And you're gonna let that dry and you're gonna flip it over so that you have a T. And again, right in the center of them, you're going to put a dollop of glue. You're going to take a bundle and stick it right in there so that you have a plus sign. Just like that. You're going to let that dry. Alright, so after it's dry, again, we're going to go in and in each V part, we're going to add some more glue right in that corner spot. You're going to take a bundle and stick it right in there, just like so. You need to hold it there so that it can dry. And then you're just going to turn it so that you have your other V. You're going to put glue right in the center of it. And then you're going to take a bundle and stick it on in there, holding it down until it dries. I'm going to turn it again so that you have another V. Again, putting glue in the center. Taking a bundle and sticking it right in there. Yeah. And then last one, turn it. So you have that last V and put glue in the center and we're going to, that's where we're putting our last bundle. Alright, stick it there. Alright, and then I'm going to wait for it to dry. And then just like the other one, after it has dried, we're going to paint it. Again, I'm still going to use white paint, but you can change up the color. So this is our second snowflake. All right, so I'm gonna bring my paint back out and we're gonna paint all sides of it. And since this one's smaller, it's a little faster to paint, and you don't need as much paint. Alright, so I've done the front and the back, now I just have to go and do the sides, just like the other one. And again, since this one's a little smaller, you might need a smaller paintbrush to make it easier. Thank 
get all the sides. I've done about half so far. Here we go. All right, so I'll show you. So I have the front, and the back, and the sides have been painted. So I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to, since I ran out of liquid glue, I'm actually not able to do this part, but I'm still going to show you. So on the ones that I made earlier, you can see I did glitter on them, so I'm going to explain how to do that. So after your snowflake is dried, which my large one has, what you would do is you would take your liquid glue and you would put it on one side of the snowflake. So like the front side, you would put it on all of the ends and then you would take your glitter and over a trash can, you would sprinkle your glitter all on the glue and then the extras over the trash can, you would shake it off and then it would end up being all shiny like this. So that's how you do the glitter. And I'm sad that I can't do it because I ran out of my glue. But I might, I have another plan. With my hot glue, I'm going to do dots on it and sprinkle glitter over the hot glue dots. But first, I'm going to, I have my trash can right here I'm gonna set up here. So I'm going to do my dots first, just maybe do some in the center, and then on the, I might have to do this in layers. Alright, we'll start with that. And then I'm going to take my glitter, so I put glue, and then I'm going to shake the glitter over where I put the glue. And it just shake, 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 and then you shake the excess into the trash can. And it did it. So, now you can see, now I have a line of glitter. So I draw my snowflake. So I'm going to do that on all of my little ends. I'm going to do two at a time. Alright, so there's two. Put the glue down, shake the glitter over it, over the trash can. Like so. You can also shake it over a plate so that you can save the extra glitter that shakes off. Alright, so that's what I have so far. And then, oops. Alright, put the glue down. Shake the glitter over it. Also, if you don't have glitter, you can use other things to decorate your snowflake. Um, you can paint it different ways. You can use pom-poms, you can use tissue paper, you can cut out pieces of construction paper. There are lots of different ways to decorate your snowflake. And the cool thing about snowflakes is that each one of them is unique, even as they fall out of the sky. And so each one of our snowflakes is unique as we create them, which is really fun. All right, my last little bit. All right. Shake it off. All right, and there you go. You can see it. Now I have lines of glitter. All right. I'm only going to do that on my large one, though. You're welcome to do that on all of yours, but I just want it on my large one. So I'm going to set that aside, and then we're going to do our last size snowflake, which is the smallest one. So with your small clothespins, so these are how tiny they are, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to twist them, and you're going to separate the wooden parts from the metal part. 
twist and pull. All right, there's two. This is number three. Six. I don't know if you feel close. They're so tight, but you just twist them apart. That's seven, and here's number eight. All right. And then it's the same thing. We're repeating the steps. You're going to find the flat side of it, take your glue. Do some small piece uh, dollops of glue and then match up your sides and make a sandwich just like that. And you're going to do it that with all of them. So at the end, you should have eight bundles. And you remember, you want the flat sides to make the sandwich. So you're matching up. Flat sides. There we go. Alright, I've done three so far. That's number four. Alright, I'm going to do this one close up for you. So, the flat side, you're going to take your glue. And be careful if you are using hot glue, because these are tiny, so your fingers get really close to them. All right, that was number five. Here's number six. All right, here's number seven. And the last one. All right, that's our last one. And then, I bet you guessed it, the next thing we're gonna do is make a plus sign with these. So with our bundles, after they've dried, you're gonna take one, and you're gonna glue the top, the more circular batter. And put a dollop of glue you're going to take your second bundle and you're going to match them up and so that they make a line. And we're going to keep going. And in our line in the center, we're going to put another dollop of glue. All right. Take another bundle and you're going to place it in the middle. Fit it as best as we can. All right, then you're going to flip it upside down again in the center. I'm going to do a dollop of glue there you go. and your bundle. Place it right there in the middle. Make sure they dry. I was a little quick on this one, so you want to make sure they dry completely before doing all of that. All right, but now we have our plus sign, just like so. And again, we're going to go in the V's, and then that's where we're going to add our other bundles. So you're going to do a dollop of glue, and you're going to add a bundle.
this, you'll clip that, and you're going to turn it like so, so you have another V, and in that center, do some glue, a bundle, and stick it on in there. Wonderful. Just like that. Let it dry some, you can blow on it. Turn it so that you have your third V. Same thing. Follow the glue in the middle. And you place your bundle there. Magnificent, guys. Alright, then you're going to turn it to your last V. And now put a dollop of glue in it. And you're going to place that last one. Nice. That looks like that. All right. So when that dries, we're gonna paint it again. Get the paint back out. And again, you're gonna paint all sides. You can do the same color or a different color whatever your heart desires, but you just wanna make sure that you cover all of it. All right, let me get the sides of it. Because this one's so tiny, you really don't need as much glue. Hands might get a little messier on this one since it's so small. Alright, once you get all the sides, you want to flip it over and paint the back. Alright, wonderful. Alright, so now that I've painted all that, we are done with the glue, so all sides are painted. We're going to set that aside to dry. And as that dries, we are going to get together our ribbon. So I'm using some yarn, but you can use ribbon or string, whatever you have around the house. And we need about the size from the end of your palm to the top of your finger, to the top of your hand. So, let's see. And it doesn't have to be perfect, that's just a general. Alright, so from the end of my palm to the top of my finger, it's right there. So it's about this much. Let's see. And I'm going to use my scissors and make sure we're being careful with our scissors. Um, make sure you have an adult nearby so they can watch you with their scissors because they're sharp, so we need to be safe. Alright, so there's one, and I'm just going to cut two, so two are about the same size. Again, you can measure by doing your palm to the top of your finger, just like that, and then you just cut it. Alright, so I'm just doing two because in a second we are going to make one of our snowflakes um, kind of 3D, so three dimensional because we're going to stack them. But I'm going to do that with my medium sized one and my small one. So my large one, I can go ahead and put the string on. So here's my large one. It's all dry. And what I'm going to do is you're going to make a loop with your string, just like this. So you're going to, you have your two ends and you're going to match your two ends together, just like that, so that you have a loop. And you're going to take your large snowflake, you're going to lay it, so so this is my front, you see it has the glitter on it, I'm going to lay that side down on my table, like so. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my ribbon on one of the ends of the snowflake. So I'm going to place it right there on one of the ends, just like that. And then I'm going to use my glue, and I'm going to glue the string down. So I'm going to hold it there. 
see and then I'm gonna glue it down. Just like that. So you're gluing it to the back and you want to lay it down. All right. So right now, so my, this is my medium one and it is dried and I am waiting on my small one to dry. And for my medium and small one, I'm not going to use glitter on it, but you are more than welcome to. Remember, you just do a thin layer of glue and sprinkle your glitter over it. But, so to stack them, what you're going to do, so I have my medium size one and my small one. And we're going to put them right in the middle of each other. And I'm going to, so I'm going to do glue in the middle of my medium size one right here. Just like a circle of glue. Alright. I don't have a little so a circle of glue in the middle. I'm taking my small one and I'm gonna sandwich them together. Just like so. Alright. And I'll hold on to their sandwich. And then, now it's a little more um, 3D, it has a little bit more shape to it than just the large one does because they're stacked. So that's what it looks like. And so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a loop with my string, so match up the ends, like so, oops, here we go. So I made a loop. And I'm going to glue that to the back of the medium size one. So I have this one, and this is the front because it has the small one on top, but I'm going to do it on the back. So I'm going to find a uh, side that's sticking out, and I'm going to glue it on there. So this time, I'm going to do the glue first. So we're going to glue. And then I'm going to take my loop and the ends are going to go right on top of that glue. And you're going to press it down gently. Just like so. Wonderful. Alright. I'm going to let that one dry. But my other one should be dry. So, and now when they're dry, you can hang them up wherever. And so you can decorate your room or your living room. I'm going to keep mine in my room. So I have these knobs around my room and I'm just going to hang mine on there. Like so. Just like that. Alright. Looks like this one's dry. So I'm going to put this one on this knob. Just like that. So now you can see them. But I want to thank you all so much for um playing with me today and making our clothespin snowflakes. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to leave a picture and the flyer of everything that you need for this in the comments below. So be sure to check that out. Um, and I hope you can join us next Sunday for Sunday Fun Day for all of our fun festivities that we have going on. All right. I hope you all have a great night. Bye.